Yeah, definitely. I can't tell this community is cancerous or anything from day one. There's a McDouble. Triple. Oh. Ah! I was lucky enough to get a beta key for Battalion 1944, which is a game that's set to come out for early access on February 1st, and it was announced via a Kickstarter campaign that made its goal in under three days. There is full speed ahead for the hype train of this game that was set to bring a return to the old school, skill-based World War II shooters of days past, but after playing it, I'm pumping the brakes. Uh, do I oh, like this second. game? This game has potential. But there is a lot of it. Some, some, some problems. This game has a COD 4 Pro mod feel to it with a World War II skin, so if you played the early Call of Duty games, you'll fit right in with how the game plays. The movement mechanics feel really smooth, and the devs nailed the gunplay with a fast time to kill without all the various bibbidi bops that Call of Duty has nowadays with perks and weapon customization, although camos will be coming in loot boxes at some point because apparently every single game needs them now for some fuck known reason. There is an arcade and competitive playlist of which the arcade playlist playlist was your respawn type game modes like TDM, Domination, and Capture the Flag, while the competitive game mode Wartide is S&D with a twist. It is a type of economy related to which loadouts you could select for the upcoming round. There is a default loadout with a semi-automatic rifle that you could use infinite amount of times, but there are special loadouts with various other types of weapons like an MP40 or a KAR or an STG44 that will cost your team one token each. When a player dies and is not using the default loadout, they drop a token for that particular loadout and if you collect that token, your team gets one token added to the pool for that loadout on the next upcoming round. Thus, if one team wins multiple rounds in a row, you'll be depleting the enemy team loadout token, so they'll be forced into making decisions about when to save their token so they won't be stuck with the default loadout, or if they only have certain classes left, they'll be forced to play a different style, kind of like here. When I was stuck with the shotgun class, I couldn't peek this long hallway, but had to defend this area where the shotgun was much more useful. I'm gonna wait over here. One out, one out over here. It's four of them, four of them, four of them. Ah! It's a great concept to put in a game where the skill ceiling is very high due to the movement system, and I don't usually like playing non-respawn game modes, but this new twist rewarded making plays in picks versus playing it slow and safe. Unfortunately, the arcade playlist, where I thought I would spend most of my time, wasn't as enjoyable. If you thought the sniping on Call of Duty World War II was bad, this game will fucking infuriate you. You can certainly use my Steam account. I mean, look at that! Come on! Oh, see, look at that! <laughs> I just got fucking insta-rec quickscoped right there. You cannot tell me that the snipers are balanced with a clip like that that just happened right there. There's three main issues here. The ADS for snipers is as fast as the SMGs and quicker than most of the other rifles in the game, which leads to quick scoping being ridiculously powerful, combined with the fact that follow-up shots are also very quick, thus making the detriment of sniping, normally being that if you miss the first shot and in closer engagement, that means you're normally going to lose the gunfight, but you get that one-shot kill factor, which means if you can hit your shot, it's fine. However, in this game, you can get a follow-up shot faster than most of the other guns can actually kill you, and they there's one shot kills from the waist up with almost no flinch. It's a recipe for disaster that leads to immense frustration. They saw it like a trend in a sense, because ah, they just remember. fucking snowballed, did it not? See, I mean, just, just do me a favor and listen to the game right now. All it is is snipers, right? Yeah, it is. When it's every all, single person sad. in the game is using a sniper, you know that there is a problem with the gun balance in your game. Just look at the kill feeds. Just look at the kill feed. That's all you need to know about the game. Oh god. YouTube is easier to get into <laughs> now. <laughs> See, even if you make a mistake with a sniper rifle, it doesn't matter. Because you can follow up shots so fast. Yeah, I figured as much. Oh my god. <laughs> Easy peasy, boys! This isn't as big of a deal in competitive because of the loadout limitations I described above, but still, most games you can at least have half of the team to use the sniper loadout, which is by far and away the best weapon in the game. Not to mention the maps in this game aren't the tiny little cluster fucks that they are in Call of Duty World War II, so you'll actually be able to use all sets of weapons in different situations based on the map design. However, of the three maps that were playable in the closed demo, one has an issue where the FPS drops like panties on prom night when looking at certain areas of the map, some of which have happens to be around objectives. There are certain areas of the map where the FPS just drops, like, to, to 15. 
you look away, 110. Look towards it, 30, 23. Look away, 133. <laughs> it's impossible to play. And another is more lopsided than J-Law's boobs and capture the flag with one team being pinned into the spawn area for nearly the entire match. The other map is great for all game modes and better than any map in Call of Duty World War II. The game also had server problems, which I don't really understand how this happens when you know how many beta codes you're going to be sending out to people. Thus, you have an idea of the number of servers to obtain for your testing. Uh -huh. Please let me play! It actually didn't matter much which server I played on, though. EUS, US Central, or US East, which is actually the closest to me, yet my ping was a recoculous 80. In the end, this feels like a game that should have been released in 2008 and not in 2018, which is actually what the devs were striving for, and we all know that nostalgia is a hell of a drug that could sell well based on Modern Warfare Reimagined. However, this game seems to be less for the casual Call of Duty audiences that the arcade-style movement mimics, and more for the players of games like CSGO with its competitive focus and also players that enjoy sniping since that mechanic seems to trump all others in the fucking game. In its current state, it's not a game for me, but that could easily change with an adjustment to the snipers. Even though it's due out on February 1st for early access, the roadmap on their website indicates that they'll probably spend about a year in early access, although it's still unclear what the process will be like for the console side of things because they also plan on releasing it for the Xbox One and PS4, but there's still plenty of time for updates to be made to the game, which means that this game will still be on my radar but I'm shying away from it now until I see some changes. I don't think it will be the Call of Duty killer that everyone probably anticipated it would be when it announced based on how it plays, but I think there might still be a market for a stripped down competitive arcade FPS style. However, how many of these people exist now and aren't sick of playing games like that anymore? We'll have to see. What do you guys think? I've been the Schwanz 27 out like the Minnesota Vikings. Until next time. Here's the thing, right? If they tweak the snipers then yeah it'll be a better game but if they want their game to play a certain way where that's the meta then it's just not fun for people like me that don't usually use it all that often <laughs>